Warning for the video, this video is going to have spoilers for not only the story of Don't Chat With Strangers, but all of its gameplay. You've been warned. Don't Chat With Strangers was released on January 6, 2017 by Barrett Swarjowski. If it sounds like I butchered that name, it's probably because I did. It was a simple point-and-click horror game with a simple premise. You as the protagonist are trying to talk to a girl named Lucy on the computer after she wakes you up in the middle of the night. The main goal of the game is to figure out how you're supposed to get further with talking to Lucy without dying, choosing different dialogue boxes while making sure you don't get killed by something around the house, inching your way closer to victory with every death, with dying having the reward of different death animations. If you've seen any gameplay of the game before, or if you've played it yourself, you know that you will die a lot. You get radio exploded on you, you get hit by a car, you get put on a cross. Hell, even bed boners come to kill you. Like, literally look at that. What is that? I'll tell you what it is. That's a bed boner. Hell, you even die when you say grapes in the game. Grapes. Lucy's left. Why? Because I sounded like grapes? What did I do? All I did was I said I liked grapes. This is actually pretty big when it came out a couple years ago. With people like Markiplier and Pro Jared playing it when it came out. A compilation video for all the deaths got over 2 million views. And even a guide for beating it got over a million. That being said, the game itself wasn't really well received. With it getting a mixed response on Steam with more negatives than positives. People pointing out the fact that it's very buggy. With the game sometimes just glitching out with multiple death animations happening at once. With there not being that many death animations to begin with, despite dying being a regular occurrence of the game, there's not that many death animations. For example, if you don't answer Lucy's questions correctly, or if you don't play the mini game she plays against you well enough, she'll leave and you'll just hang yourself the same type of way every time. Meaning that not only will you die a lot in this game, you just see the same death animations over and over again. Another problem people had was how overpriced it was. The game itself probably only has around 20 minutes of actual content in it, Granted, most people had to play for longer because the game doesn't explain itself well enough to show people what they're supposed to do at a certain point. For example, so after you figure out how to get Lucy not to murder you on the computer, you have to figure out that not only are you supposed to go to your car, even though that car has killed you every other time you've gone to it, that you have to drive to one of four specific places and bury her in tune with the music. If you go too fast, she'll kill you. If you go too slow, she'll kill you. These are things that are never really explained in the game at all, so you're just left to fumble around until you get it by chance, really. Another thing is that has one of the most unsatisfying endings in a game I've ever seen. After figuring all this out, all you get is a screen that says winner with Lucy's face on it, despite this being like frustrating to do, and you just get that and that's it. There's no extra mode, there's no ending cutscene. I think Markiplier says it best when he beat the game. WINNER! THAT'S IT?! That's all you give me! That is just that! Excuse you! Oh, that's it. That's it. That's all you get. I was hoping that was gonna be satisfying, not hand cramping and horrible! You might wonder why I'm talking about this now, especially since it's been around three years. Well, it's because I'm sad this game wasn't better. Because it probably had one of the best premises for an indie game I've seen. Hell, if you put this in the right hand, this type of game could be a lot bigger. But first I want to say all the good things in this game first before I talk about everything I would change and improve. The first, the visuals and atmosphere. The game looks great with a clear pixelated art style that helps drive the atmosphere. It looks very unique. It helps drive in the fear because everything's so dark and like stylized. The game makes you feel alone. You feel like you're in the middle of the night talking to someone online while all hell is breaking loose around you. Despite the limited amount of death scenes there are, all of them are really well animated and pretty unique, with all of them being over the top of blood and gore without detracting from the horror itself. In what other game do you get stabbed by a ghost, hit by a car and turned into a gory mess, or just exploded on by a radio? Also, bed boners stab you, so that's something else that I find pretty unique. Another thing I like is the story, and how open-ended it is. The story itself is pretty simple. If you play the game regularly, you find out Lucy's haunting you because you killed her. Now she's going to kill you if you don't bury her. The game never tells you why specifically. Lucy never tells you, hey, you killed me. But if you take pills hidden in your room before you die, you see a flashback to you hitting Lucy with your car. I say open-ended because that's all you're specifically given. You're never given a clear reason who she is or who you are, really. She's shown as a deer before you hit her, so did the main character think she was a deer and didn't stop? Or just didn't care about her being a person and just kept driving? Lucy's shown to be in a white dress. Is that just a style? Was that her wedding night? 
Were you the groom or was she just marrying someone else you don't know? Cause she's hitting on you during the messages so it's open ended. And that's all it had to be, enough for a clear reason and resolution. While leaving little details for people to draw their own conclusions on what the context is. It's simple like I said, but that's all it had to be. One detail I like is that Lucy wants to talk to you at one point on the phone. You have to talk to her or else you'll just die. But when you're about to say yes, your computer reboots. When you get back, she leaves because you left her alone for too long and you die. But when you start the game again and view the computer's logs, you see your number. That's a really cool decision. Using death to get information for another run is interesting. Another detail I like is how they show like the time limit. You're timed on this, so if you're not fast enough, Lucy will just stab you. It indicated this by how many times she shows up. First time she'll hug you, and the second time she'll just stab you. So when you see her for the first time, that means you gotta hurry up or else she'll die. That being said, there's a lot of problems in this game, obviously. The first thing I would fix is to make it more clear on what you're supposed to do, or at the very least, what you can do. For example, you will hear gas leaking, or Lucy will tell you that gas is leaking. But you're not given a clear indication of what that means or where that is at. Or that's even something you can interact with. So if you don't go in the back room, you just explode, but you're not really told. There's no real indication that that's where the gas is at, you just have to guess. Another thing I would add is more death scenes. All of Lucy leaving you deaths just result in you hanging yourself. There could have been a lot more interesting ones due to this. Say when you destroy her in the bun mashing game, when she leaves you get crushed by a giant fist or something. Or when you lose fruits versus mechs you get shot by something. Just more death scenes to make losing less tedious when you die figuring out what to do. Another thing I would add would be multiple ways to get to the ending. The ending itself could stay. You having to bury her is a fine resolution and makes sense. But there could have been multiple ways to distract her. Like maybe if you get far enough into Fruits vs. Max instead of her calling you, you say you'll watch her beat it, and while she's doing that you go look for her body. Because although it is a cool detail that when you're listening to her on the phone you can hear where her body is, if you hear water it means she's by the waterfall and the same goes for all the other locations. It's just not very interesting to work towards the same thing over and over again. That's another problem, there's no replay value at all. Like I said, there's not a lot of death animations and there's no secrets to unlock. Also, the whole reward of the game being a single screen that says winner probably doesn't help with the replay aspect. Maybe have a more satisfying ending like a cutscene of the next day would help. And maybe like a challenge mode where you're trying to like keep her from killing you as long as possible. That's all I would change really. I mean the bugs are a major problem that need to be ironed out, but that's more of a just the game was made poorly instead of the gameplay itself, you know what I mean? Why did I decide to talk about this? Because I love the idea of this game. I love the idea of a 2D horror game where you have to figure out what to do in a 2D puzzle-like game, but under constant threat of everything. I just love that. I love how you have to figure out why they're trying to kill you and what you have to do to make them stop. Hell, I would give it a try to make a game like this if I could, but, you know, I can't make video games. Now, is everything in this game terrible? No. It's just underwhelming. Especially since you have to pay $5 for this 20-minute experience that gets stale after 5 minutes. So if you think this game might interest you, I'll put a link to it in the comments. Just know that it basically spoiled the whole game for you. Not only the story, but basically everything you could play or look forward to. The guy that made this, whose name I won't say again because I'll butcher it, makes other pixelated games too. And those are a lot better received, so look at them if you're interested. One's a roguelike and another's a platformer. I decided to make this video because this game's always interested me, and I feel like it could have been really good if put in the right hands. And it's also been a while since I've talked about anything gaming related specifically. If you remember my Butch Hartman video, I used Warhammer Space Marine as like background footage. That originally was going to be part of a new challenge where I beat the game with only a melee weapon and pistol. I never made it since I couldn't really come up with much of a script. The game was surprisingly easy even with only those two weapons. I still died of course, but it was a lot easier than the Max Payne one so there wasn't a lot to talk about. That being said, if you enjoy my content, please like and subscribe. I'll try to make more gaming stuff in the future. Comment if you like this type of content. I wouldn't mind making more stuff like this. Like, I wouldn't mind talking about The Last of Us 2 like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.